This is Lee, APR57, for another episode of Amazing Appraising here in our amazing gallery on 57th Street. And we have something that our one of our clients thinks is a world treasure. I'd like to introduce Mr. Nick here. Okay, from the uh, Castle Builders. From New Jersey, I guess. Yes, uh, Westfield, New Jersey. Westfield, New Jersey. And how did you hear about us, Mr. Nick? <sighs> Mr. Lee, we're highly recommended. I spoke to several, several antique dealers. I said I need the best appraiser in the business. They directed me to one place and one place only. That was you. Thank Unanimous you. across the board. Thank you very much. Unanimous okay, so um, we have a, actually a, a weekly radio show on WOR, the number one talk station in New York I every see. Sunday called Amazing Appraising. So we're going to be uh, talking about your uh, small item here and see what we can do for you. So um, first of all, what do we have here? What do you think we have here? So long story short, my construction company, Castle Builders in Westfield, New Jersey, led me to the metal business, right? Everyone knows what the market is doing. I can't leave metal around. I can't leave money around. I start scouring Facebook for grain and silverware, and I find something very atypical. So atypical, in fact, I think it may be fake at first, like, you know? But for the price, 250 bucks, I'm just gonna say it out loud, I'm gonna take a shot. We get in the Cadillac, we drive an hour north to the top of New Jersey, right? Uh, right this was a York. couple days ago? This was a couple weeks, weeks ago, right? Kind of shady, I knock on the door, a woman comes to the door, someone comes around the back, I see the box, I feel the imprint, I feel the weight of the spoons. I'm convinced enough, for 250, whatever lady, prove me wrong, you know, I don't care. Take the spoons home, start doing diligence, start doing diligence, start doing, I'm doing the same thing, I can't find a picture. Nothing okay. like it, right? You start digging deep. My, 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 uh, the, ch the mother of my child is in public relations, media consulting. She's an animal on the computer. It is not available. She can't find it. I promise you it's not on the internet. I promise you. I'll bet you any amount of dollars. It's not available. Okay? Um, we're looking, we're looking, we're doing research, and now she's finding blueprints, right? Hand drawn by more that match. The hand drawn by Moore. Do you want to tell my uh, listeners who Moore was? So, before Tiffany and Company was formed, um, there was, I believe, John C. Tiffany in America, and Edward Moore was in uh, England. Edward Moore came over to America, and what made his silver special, right? What made it special, what allowed them, what allowed Tiffany to win the Grand Prix in 1887 was Moore's addition of platinum to the mix of sterling, sterling silver, right? Um, that was what, that's what he brought to the table, right? And that's what made them, that's what gave them the, uh, the ability to win, right? The Grand Prix in 1887 in France because they tested several different um, aspects of a piece. Just like if I build a house, right? I'm going to turn the plumbing on. I'm not just going to show you the house, right? So you can picture, you know, who was the Empress on the throne in 1887 with an E? Edwina. Mm -hmm. So 1887 was important. I believe it was Empress Edwina was on the throne in Paris. Um, and she, instead of using the typical royal purple, used the Pantone blue on her gowns. Tiffany adopted the color in 1887, the same year they won the Grand Prix, with a Japanese hummingbird spoon. Now, when I saw this, my heart dropped because it's so atypical. First of all, there's not even a patent number on it, right? So pretend I'm Castle Builders, right? And I'm gonna build you a home. I don't have the patent number of this house. This is my house, I'm bringing my home to the competition. It's just a simply Tiffany and Company's engraving. These aren't even stamps. I had these looked at, the whole set by many professional jewelers and none of the work. And when I say the work, because it's beyond you know, a level of of silverware at the point that it's at, it's it's really art. You know, we're talking anagrams, pictures that you turn one way on these spoons and flip the spoon. It's an opposite of the picture. It's insane, you know. Um, so with this particular spoon, what I found amazing and which was also verified was the acid dots on the spoon. And why is the spoon sharp, right? If these are examples. Why is the spoon sharp? Why is there acid on the spoon? And I had to say to myself, well, geez, if I'm gonna enter my spoon into the Grand Prix, there's gonna be several different people measuring, right? There's gonna be a metal expert who's gonna detect the platinum. And the cuts that I saw with my own eyes, I don't have platinum shines. I got the same microscopes in my house, right? And I see the blue and purple in the engravings. Holy shit, it's there, right? The platinum's there. 
And my jeweler verified it. You know, we're popping champagne in jewelry stores in Westfield, New Jersey, of course. And I start putting it together. Of course, there's going to be a metal guy. There's going to be someone judging the engraving. And at the end of the table, there's going to be a big guy with the most perfect grade for me in all of Paris. And he's going to test the spoon one time. Right? That's how I think it would have went. And they won that year. Right? That was the winner. And then also extremely atypical, which we have the patent verified by Tiffany's, right? 1887, the same year. It's supposed to be the Olympian, right? Because you could order several different sets from Tiffany, right? Shell and thread is an example. The chrysanthemum's an example. The Olympian's an example, right? If you, if you order silverware. But it's not right. It's not the Olympian. It's the God Pan. But why? Right? Pantone blue. 1887. This is special. This is different. Okay, okay so Nick. There's more. There's way more. Okay, yeah. so when somebody comes in here and they show me their items, mm -hmm. okay, I use, I first look at them. Um, I use, I have also a gut feeling about these things. Okay? And then I go pros and cons. That means I look at the the items, I first, forget value, I first try to figure out exactly what they are. Once I ascertain what I believe they are, I'm not, sometimes I'm not 100% sure, I'm 80% sure, but that's a good 80%, okay? Then I figure out what the value is based on supply, demand, but I always try to figure out first what the items are or supposed to be. So when you first show them to me, um, if you look closely on the back, you're going to see the word patent or patented. Do you see that on one of them? I see them on some of them. Right, okay. So what does patent mean? Patent, from what was explained to me at client services. So I had done the same thing you did. I looked at these and I wrote down the best I could for each one. I took what I had and bounced it off client services. They... But just tell me what well, you think the word patent means. Oh, I just believe it's a it's a it's a legal term, I believe, right? That means you, what? That I own this 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 product, this 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 so, design, whatever it is. Good, yeah. good. Licensing. Okay. So why would somebody want to patent something? You have to patent something to prove you own it. Not to prove the design. Own. No. In no. court, legally, maybe. I don't no, know. No, no. I'm not so expert here. Like, right. So the please. answer the answer yeah, is that in general, very general terms, yes, is that if you make a product and you believe that the product is going to be in huge demand and you sort of made something new. Then, so if you design something, that patent could be both on an invention or a design. So you're coming up with a new design theoretically that you want to protect, that you think is going to be a superstar design. You don't want anyone else to copy it. You want full credit for it. So you're going to patent. But you're not going to patent something, a design work. Donna Karen, if she makes a new design, she's not going to patent it if she wants to make one. She's going to patent it if she wants to make a million. Because she believes it's going to be, be a big seller. It's going to be right for other companies to knock it off. So she wants to say, I'm the owner of this product or this design, and I'm going to make 10 million pieces. So I'm going to make sure I think it could, I think theoretically it can be a hit. So I want to protect myself and have the rights to this. So if Joe Schmo goes to copy it, I can take him to court and say, listen, that's my design. I did it first. Okay. So what that means is when you see an item such as this with the word patented, it means theoretically the manufacturer or the maker, in this case, Tiffany and company, had in their head that they were going to patent it because they wanted to make a lot of these that's that production. nobody else would copy. That was their goal. We don't want people copying this design because we're going to make a lot and we think it's going to be nice set. Okay. So automatically one can infer that if they thought they were going to make a lot, they probably did. Now they might after the first couple of years, if it didn't catch on, possibly stop making them. They're not going to take the word patent off, but they'll just stop making them. If it's not a hit, you know what, after the first year or two, Maybe, you know, in many cases, what happens is it gets some traction, some people buy it, they keep it going for a couple of years, and then maybe it either becomes a hit and they make millions, 
or they stop it and that's it. Okay, so the first I see the word patent there. So that means you're typically not gonna see, not always, I mean, I have a, I guess it's 1880 uh, or 1900, um, the first ticker take stock machine, ticker take stock machine that was invented by Thomas Edison. So it has a patent number. Now they did, so they did make, they started to make more of them, but I have one of the very first. So it could be a rare item if it's patented, but generally speaking, it, the idea and the um, mentality of the manufacturers are going to make a lot. So when you make a lot, typically, everything is supply and demand, it means that it becomes what's called typically a commercial product, and it's not terribly valuable, okay, because there's more than made, okay. They are stamped sterling, which means it's sterling silver. For my listeners, they know that means uh, typically 92.5% of sterling silver, okay. There is no reference here that there's any platinum in these spoons, regardless of um, what you're saying. Um, now, again, you said your um, friend, your female friend, looked this up online. Now, I happen to be an expert at looking at these things and finding them. Okay. So, in my opinion, and also the box here to me is also... Uh, our friend Nick here thought, I think you said they were the 1800s, you thought? Okay. So, typically, again, it's not always the case. I mean, one could theoretically have um, an item from 1850. I'm going to go over my, my listeners in this in a few minutes. But uh, this is like from 1870, an old Tiffany piece. And theoretically, one could bring it into Tiffany's and they put it in a newer box for, you know, to give you the box to say here, display it. Okay, this is a custom, this is a custom made Tiffany box and it has slits for, it, he brought it in here, it has the slits of, for the six spoons, okay? To me, this box is very modern. I would uh, venture to say this box looks like from the 1960s. My, that would be the, you know, the oldest the box looks like. And it looks like the box was made for these spoons. Okay, so that being said, um, now I'm gonna put everything together for you and make a conclusion, okay? Now, I mean, this is a piece that has a, a, a serial number. Now when it has, a, Tiffany has a serial number on it, okay? It means two things. It means one, that they made it one of a kind. Now they could have made others, but it means that they recorded it in their archives as this being, if you went to them and said, here, this is the number, they would look it up, and this number actually dates it to about 1870, okay? And so it serves two purposes. It serves a purpose to date it, and it serves for Tiffany's purpose that they keep a record of it, okay? And so at that time, I mean, this was, you know, they could have charged for this piece a hundred, you know, maybe a hundred fifty dollars and eighteen so and so. That was a lot of money then. So they wanted to keep record of everything. That was how they kept their uh, their database. And typically, Cartier did the same thing. The the high end uh, uh, silversmiths, watchmakers, jewelers, they did this. They kept the Tiffany piece. Okay. So yours are lacking serial numbers. So the main reason that they're lacking serial numbers is not because, oh my gosh, they're probably fake and they're not real. It's because of the word patent. When they make something with the idea of making it in large quantities, they typically won't put a serial number on it. That's the difference between in watches, all better watches, Patek Philippe, Rolex, Cartier, they have serial numbers denoting that this is this exact watch. They will also have typically a reference number or a model number that's the style of the watch. But the serial numbers are one of a kind. The reference number, if they made a thousand of these watches, that's the standard number for the month. So these are lacking serial numbers. Not because they're fake or there's a question of authenticity, because it wasn't worth for Tiffany to put a serial number on it. They made, in my opinion, thousands of these, and they're not gonna put a serial number on it. This is one of a kind, it's much older, one of a kind, they put a serial number on it, okay? The spoon that we have that matches this, in my opinion, is very similar to your spoons, meaning the design. It has a very similar design on the top. Not quite, but very similar. 
But anyhow, that being said, so my guesstimate was, again, we don't want to get anyone set here, upset here, but my guesstimate was that this is an original Tiffany sterling silver um, small set of six spoon spoons were very popular to sell the sets in the box. And this, in my opinion, this is the box it came in. My opinion is 100% genuine. They're sterling silver. This set, in my opinion, would only retail maybe three to four hundred dollars. That was what I thought. Now, of course, he was here for a few minutes. I looked online, um, and here we have somebody selling this online. What appears to be the exact same set, Demitas spoon set of six, in the original Tiffany box, okay? And if you look closely at the spoons, they all match up exactly. You let me say, exactly. Found I'll put them in order. Oh, yeah. there it is, you found it. I found it, buddy. Where the heck did you ever find it? That's them. That's them. The exact same set. No, yeah. she wouldn't know. Um, you couldn't find it anywhere. So they're selling it. We have a woman here that's selling this for I don't know where you bought yours. This woman is in Butler, New Jersey. Is that near you? No, I don't know. Is that near the lady that how sold it? How long ago was it? Huh? It might have been. How much? I, I bought it for two fifty. Well, she was asking retail two ninety five. Yeah, good. So what we have here is probably now. I have a good eye, so meaning that if uh, the pictures, they only have like one picture here. But um, let me see. Sometimes, I, I know what to look for even to match these up, whether it's actually the same piece or not. So her pictures, unfortunately, are not clear enough for me to, uh, to match it up exactly, but, um, you know, there's a, you know, so what I'm teaching my audience is if, if, for example, one of these spoons in her picture has a clear scratch or something like that, or a mark or a dent, I could match it up to, to, to this one to see if it's actually the same I'll set. Let me see. Because I found it on Facebook Market. That's probably, that's probably okay. the same lady. Well, this one yeah. appear, it appears to be... Uh, that's probably it. How, how long was the post? That I was going to say, this one appears to be still up there. So, um, either she has more or she didn't take it off the set. Yeah, it was kind of shady, dude. Huh? It was kind of shady, the deal. It was a shady deal. <laughs> you know? It was well, a little shady. So, I'm, I'm thinking... And this is, this, is what, this is what I'm concerned about, right? This is my concern. That this is definitely not a set. If it was a set, it, it would have matching numbers. It would have been produced as a set. This is a collection. These are okay. collected. Somebody is selling the exact same collection so set the same, group the same in a brand new box for two hundred and ninety-five dollars. That's the hold on, that's the lady. Huh? That's the area. That's this is her. That's why I bought it. That's the set I bought. That's the way I went. I'm looking at the map. That's the set I bought. Okay. So. Um, That's the set I bought. Okay, so, and my guess is, I'm not going to say, you were thinking you took advantage of her. I'm not saying no. she took advantage of you. Yeah. I don't think there was anyone taking advantage of. You paid $250, which is a um, very, very fair price for this set. Um, but unfortunately, you know, we had all these, we had actually two cases of Dom Perignon Champagne here. I really do. I have it here. I'll show it to you after. I'll show it to you, okay? That um, that in the event this was worth the fortune that uh, our friend Nick had hoped for, and he was actually uh, very nice about this. He was saying that hopefully, uh, if it, that's the case, the money would go to uh, a school for aut autistic children. Yeah, I think, to right? small classrooms. Okay, cool. So, anyhow, um, that's what we have here. So, um, I can't confirm it's the same exact set but it's the same set style and uh and um that's the story so retail to be continued about 300 hours so anyhow what would um, you do so lee i was referred to the archives by tiffany so now the problem is the archives they don't do appraisals so i think we need to go to the archives right find the provenance who i i'm not going to say who i think owned it 
due to one of the uh, the crests on the middle spoon. But it can't be. Yeah. We have some lady in New Jersey selling it. There's no problem. Nobody cares. I mean, you know, if you yeah. can show that this was owned by John F. Kennedy or whoever it might be. Yeah. But this set, she doesn't even, whoever listed it here doesn't even put a year on it. But my guess is 19, 1960s. Okay, and that's it. That's it. So I would not say it's terribly valuable. I would sell the set for, you know, three, four hundred dollars. She's selling. I could buy one for two ninety five from her. Whatever. Um, and that's the story. So I, my advice is I don't think you should waste any more time on it. Tiffany's, they do have a, typically an archive and an appraisal and research department. But they don't do appraisal, that's why we can't. Not appraisal, appraisal yeah, yeah. but they'll do the research. Yeah, they'll do the research. And they'll tell you if they sold it. And that's really what they'll do. And they'll tell you perhaps what they sold it for when it was sold. So they would say maybe 1958. Uh, so we sold it for you know, fifty dollars, something like that. But it's very expensive. They charge tip over over a thousand. Oh yeah, thousand. Start five hundred. Uh, right, right, right. right. So I, I would think that would be a good way to waste money. It's my guess. So, everyone out there, don't be disappointed. If you have anything else that you wish to have appraised, please contact us and. Uh, We'll be happy to evaluate and appraise it for you. Uh, if you're in the local area, you can bring it in and we can actually do it uh, online on a video for you. And again, we don't do it like these other shows where they come in and they do the research beforehand and all the studying for days and weeks and then they call in an expert. I do it live in person and I authenticate it here and we figure it out while in most cases while the person's waiting. So anyhow, if you have anything else and you find we work with a lot of contractors that find stuff. So if you have anything else, stamps, coins, jewelry, watches, paintings, artwork, let us know. We'll keep this up. Thank you, Nick. Thank you, sir. Okay, take care. That's hard. That was exciting. I wish I had better news.